I was up in um, Massachusetts in the summer at a wedding north of Boston, in a lovely little coastal town. Mm. Um, and I met a couple and I was chatting to the guy who was asking what I was doing and I was talking about you know, CGD and some of the things we do, including migration work. And he was saying, okay, I work as a carpenter and I've got buddies and they can't get jobs because illegal immigrants, and they were illegal immigrants, are undercutting them in the workplace. And so they're directly losing out from migration. It's the small picture versus the big picture. Mm -hmm. But as a politician, how would you address that? What do you say to those people? I think that so, so migration is a big social change. It's a long-term social change. And I think that it is, it is certainly possible for, for individuals to be harmed in real ways by big social changes, structural changes in the economy, openness to international trade, openness to migration. It's, it would be dishonest to, to pretend that those kind of displacements don't ever happen. They certainly do happen. And for the person who is unemployed, it's extremely difficult. I think that politicians owe people uh, support, uh, social safety nets, uh, when those things happen. So in the US, we have something called trade adjustment assistance for several decades. You can apply to the Department of Labor if you're working in a, a place or an industry that had a lot of plant closures due to a trade agreement and you can get uh, subsidized job training, you can get extended unemployment benefits, and I think those things are appropriate because the benefits to these things in the aggregate outweigh the costs and we need mechanisms like that for the winners to compensate the losers. I, I would talk about uh, the transition out of agriculture in the US. In, in 1790, 90% of the labor force of the US was in agriculture. And by 1880, it was about half. By 1930, it was about 20%. And today, it's 2.5%. And you know, we can look romantically at the past and say, well, the transition out of agriculture was just that people were perfectly happy with all these great farm jobs, and then they just had this other stuff that they could do, so they moved to the city. It wasn't like that at all. It, it was brutal. It, it was the uh, farms would mechanize, and suddenly there were just weren't jobs in the local area for people who used to do uh, hand harvest, and they had to find something else to do. And when you're 45 and you've been doing that all your life, that's extremely difficult. And at an individual level, that's hard. But I also don't think anybody would look back and say, well, because that was hard for a lot of people, we should still have 90% of the labor force in agriculture and, and not have Google and not have any of the, 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 the changes that could only happen because of that big structural shift. What we need are institutions to smooth that transition.